Good morning. We are here with Session Ramlakan from Resolve Brokers. Hello, Session. How are you? Well, Jane, thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure having you. We're really looking forward to hearing about your story and sharing your journey with our network. Um, we'll start off by asking you uh, a little bit about yourself, what you do, why you do it, and um, yeah, over to you. Perfect. All right, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I am the owner, operator, and principal mortgage broker for Resolve Finance Geelong. Um, we're part of a franchise group, which I found was definitely better than um, a lot of things, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, but I've been in the mortgage origination games for over a decade now, starting mm -hmm. out with the NAB as a credit assessor. Mm -hmm. and making my way up to branch manager and mobile lender and now hopefully finishing off with being a mortgage broker. Wonderful. So you had quite a stellar career thus far. I would say so. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. So if you had to start from square one, what would you do differently now that you've been a business owner for quite a while? Thank you. One of the things that... Um, one of the things that I would have done differently having start have haven't had the chance to start over is definitely got to know what my process or what kind of process I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. So it would have involved even getting to know, spending that six months getting to know the local brokers, maybe that uh, that established brokers in my area, mm -hmm. um, even seeing if there were shared mutual connections where I can sort of leverage and, and pick their brain onto what really worked and what didn't. Mm -hmm. um, because coming into the process when I first started, I had a pre-established process that the banks all have, mm -hmm. you know, very cookie cutter. Um, and I've always, I didn't like the restrictions of it, which is what sort of forced me to go into mortgage broking. Mm -hmm. um, because I'd like to always have my own brand to stand to it. And what I didn't anticipate starting out was that the business would take off like it did, mm -hmm. um, which uh, then led to not having enough time to then develop my brand and really make sure that I was looking after those new relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if I did have a chance to go back, it would have been, I would have taken six months out of my time just to really hone and break down what kind of process I wanted. Hmm, sounds amazing. So, you know, just to follow on that, I'm assuming there was a lot of learnings as well that came through the uh, that process. Uh, would you like to share with us your top two learnings? My top two learnings? Yes, of mm -hmm. course. So my first learning is uh, would be the ability to say no, okay. I think, and establish clear boundaries. I think uh, starting out as a, as a small business owner in anything, you – you're driven to make your business grow. Mm -hmm. uh, in most instances, uh, it is, you know, taking meetings at 11 o'clock, sometimes in the evening, um, because you've got shift workers and that's the only time that they're available to see you mm -hmm. or, you know, um, uh, taking phone calls or text messages or answering emails from clients over the weekend when you're meant to be spending time with your family, Um yeah, it was it was definitely one of the the biggest wake, uh, wake up uh, wake up calls was um, was when my wife got really upset when we were answering <laughs> emails, at, you know, at children's birthday parties and all that. Mm -hmm. um, that one was was my first. My second is definitely having an established process mm -hmm. and committing to that process. So it is having a debt. For example, now I plan out my day so for example from 12 o'clock to two o'clock is purely for applications mm -hmm. I don't I put myself on mute I turn my emails off offline and it just gives me that two hours to focus and get that work done um, mm -hmm. which is something I wish I had learned to do from the very beginning sounds wonderful it's all about time management isn't it and trying to focus on what's going to get you the results Completely, completely. And then sitting down with you um, as my business coach was definitely the eye-opening moment is because of all the extra time I thought I had been making myself more valuable to my business when, in fact, I was devaluing myself by giving that additional time. I think when we did the exercise, I worked out we were sitting at about $7 an hour with mm -hmm. the amount of hours I was doing on my work, and now I'm sitting quite comfortably at that $50, which is perfect. Sounds wonderful. You've been a business owner, I'm guessing. 
yes, being a business owner, definitely. Sounds wonderful. And it's really good to see the growth session. Well done. So I know you spoke about your family as well. So how do you balance? You know, it's it's it can be at times quite challenging trying to balance a, your personal life or your family life with running your own business. How you find that and what, you know, is there anything you can share with us in what you are doing or what you are not doing? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So it definitely was... And it's actually a, still a bit of a challenge because the the world of business is it's so dynamic and it's changing on the head of a pin. Um, where over the last twelve months you would have, would have definitely seen with interest rates going up almost on a weekly basis, um, where we're needing to grow and adapt. So being able to look after clients who, like I said, shift workers, um, because I mainly I my target audience is police officers, emergency workers, nurses, and they work shift hours. Mm -hmm. So being adaptable and agile to sort of work around them is definitely gives me a competitive advantage, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely doesn't help uh, when you, my my wife Yana is trying to balance uh, getting the kids keeping the kids quiet, getting them fed, getting them bath while I'm conducting a home loan appointment in the background and needing to, you know, to show a really calm demeanor and persona, you know, very, very uh, unchaotic environment. Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely has been a bit of a challenge, but definitely I would say one of the main pillars that's been amazing is the support system that we've got. Mm -hmm. um, in, in my wife where she is she just understands that this is just part of the process mm -hmm. um and that yeah just just having that ability to to know that the, everything will be taken care of if I just have to do something that's a little bit outside of the time mm -hmm. um but if from a hardline point of view is establishing those clear time boundaries mm -hmm. uh, especially with your with clients so how I've done that is uh, it used to be five days or seven days a week, you know, 24 hours a day. I've now limited to um, Monday, Tuesdays, it's business hours. Ch um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are where I will take appointments up to 7, 38 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and Wednesdays, there are no appointments. So it's just manage it's And it comes down to what you said before. It's completely and purely time management and creating mm -hmm. those time expectations um, and that I found, I thought, look, I was really worried that it was going to turn away and uh, cost me some business, mm -hmm. but I find that this has actually made my business uh, more profitable, but also people now are valuing my time. So clients are actually valuing the time that you give them as opposed to uh, just thinking you'll be waiting on them hand and foot sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. It creates a more respectful relationship. Beautiful. So Session, you know, I think what you mentioned is so common with a lot of business owners. Can you share with us what system you have adopted or what process you have done? A little bit more on a granular level, because I think our audience will find that very beneficial. Yeah, of course, of course. <clears throat> the systems that we've we've adopted have been cons consistently changing. Mm -hmm. Um what I had been doing initially was a lot of the changes, I would have a backbone, but I would be doing a lot of those um, minute changes manually. So mm -hmm. it would be emails that, that would I would type up from the start or, you know, just make small adjustments. Now it's um, everything is succinct and templated. So there'll be different stages. It will trigger automatic test messages that will go out. And then there'll be an associated template that I just go and I click, I amend um, with the more important details. And then it just cuts down that time, that time waste. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to whole um, uh, the time management side of it and, and finding it easier to balance your work and life. Mm -hmm. And not being such a, and similar to what you've spoken about in our coaching sessions, not being an employee in the business, but actually being your business owner. Mm -hmm. um, but the on a granular level, it was it was. I think it would be it would come down to the accountability side of it all. Is I when it was just me, I was less accountable to the change, which means I'd always put it on the back burner. It would always be the last thing that I do. 
You know, it would, it, it was never on my list of priorities. It would be there. It would be, I would do it if I have to, or if I've got a few minutes, but if I've got a few minutes, uh, the last thing I want to do doing is, is work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it would just never be done. And then getting a coach helped immensely because you've got someone that's there um, to keep you accountable to the expectations that you set for yourself, mm-hmm. which is kind of an oxymoron because you've said, I'm going to commit to doing this, but you never do it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you've got someone saying, hey, last week you said you were going to have this done, why don't you have it done? It's very challenging and very barring, but it sort of, it gives you the motivation that you need to not, because obviously I think a lot of people don't like to be displeasing mm-hmm. and, you know, and they'd like to stay, be, you know, they'd like to honor and meet their words. So mm-hmm. that's, I think, where the biggest challenge, uh, biggest um, sort of catalyst for that change and being able to, to speak to someone about the changes that you're making and how it will be received um, from uh, you know, for example, other brokers in our network, in our mm-hmm. franchise group that would talk about, you know, more experienced brokers about this is a process that I'd like to change. What do you think? What are your ideas? And then also taking it to someone who is not a broker. Um, so like your coach who could be a potential client or doesn't understand the int- intricacies of the industry like you do. Mm-hmm. And they would give their sort of their bird's eye view on what that change will impact and improve. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, does that answer your question? Absolutely. It's really good. Yeah, a lot of clarity in it. And thank you very much for that session. And I think when you go through the whole journey of your um your business ownership so far, there's you know, there's a lot of misconceptions when you go into business, what it's going to be like. Mm. And what it actually ends up is completely different. Did you have that experience or was your vision? Oh, yes, yes, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> it was it was definitely eye-opening. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, de- I, when I did go into business, the reason that I left or the motivations around why I left was um, I was overworked. I was definitely under, I don't think I was being fairly remunerated for what I was doing. I was, you know, doing going above and beyond at the sacrifice of my family life. <clears throat> um, and it just, there was just no reason for being in a, in a role like that. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know what, I want to change something. I want to go out and start my own business, um, which is where I did. But then I fell into the same trap where I was, <laughs> and, and I had no one else to blame but myself, where I was overworking. I was unfairly remunerating myself. Um, I was, yeah, sacrificing family life and work balance just to, you know, chasing that growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just, you kind of, it, it was definitely an eye opener and you, you, you kind of think it would be different, but it never is. Mm-hmm. The only time it actually became different was, was this year. So I'm already three years into my business and it's, it's only really clicked that this is, this is what owning your own business is meant to be like is having everything, Um, at a point where you could be, you know, um, overseas Mm -hmm. and still actioning your business and know that something's going wrong. So taking the leap and getting a staff member was something that was a challenge for this year, which we've done, Um, completely overhauling our systems um, and processes, which I was really concerned about because I thought, oh, you know, what about existing clients, you know, new clients, they'll be put on the back burner for the next two to three months while we're getting everything in order, mm-hmm. uh, training up our new staff member in the, the new process when she's only just learned the old process. There are all these things that you just, you never know, but it's made such a massive difference um, in how <clears throat> in how the, the business operates outside of myself mm, perfect. so those that was probably the biggest biggest eye, eye, eye opener i would say mm, and, it's, yeah. you know, and it doesn't happen in that first six to 12 months um it it could flux like from in my example it's three years later um mm. there are other brokers who are still sole operators slaving to their business and they've been in the in the roles for over a decade mm. you know so it's definitely mm. It's definitely, yeah, even just while talking about it, sort of reminiscing, it sort of goes, well, really come a long way in such a short amount of time, but Mm -hmm. it just took a lot of time for those, the the boulder to move. 
No, absolutely. <laughs> and it's also, Isthmus, you know, I think also we got to don't be too harsh on ourselves as well because we haven't owned a business before. You know, since this is the first time you're owning a business, so it's going through the process. You know, and what also impacts us as well is the constant changing of the business environment. You know, right. it's very unpredictable. And obviously in your industry, the interest rates and stuff like that. So it's nothing consistent. So it's managing those inconsistency as well with everything else that, that a business owner has to do as well. So, right. um, you know, obviously you have, uh, you know, you have experienced absolute phenomenal growth in your business. Um, you know, what would you attribute your growth? I know you got about systems, you spoke about your staff and, you know, your support. I think a lot has to come from your motivation as well. So what, you know, what drives you to, despite what the economy is, despite, but, you know, month on month, you are hitting goals. You know, what, yeah. what motivates you to do that? The motivation behind it is I, and I think it stems from my parents. Mm-hmm. So especially from my mom's side is very focused on, there's just the never, it's not, it's not unhappy with where you are, but it's always, it's that growth to always do better. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just something it's, it's, it comes down to anything, anything that I do. It's if I feel like I'm stagnant, I get very itchy. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to, how else to describe that, that feeling. Mm-hmm. So that for me is, is it's, it's my personal motivation is I just, I don't like sitting still. Yeah, your family obviously is definitely one of those things because you know, uh, we were give, we were very lucky and we were uh, got to experience a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, life experiences, and we're never for never wanting kind of a thing. And it's something that I'd really like to be able to give for my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's the family motivation behind it, um, and also building up a really good business is just. It, it just feels like it's, it's, I would akin it to uh, an architect who has designed this fantastic building. And every time they drive past that building, they just get that really set, that real, that real sense of accomplishment. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or like a, a lot of tradie clients, they, they work on these really beautiful houses in Ocean Grove. And every time they drive past it, they're like, I've, I've, I was part of that process. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just that profound sense of achievement. Mm-hmm is yeah. really it's the motivating part of it so getting to that point where my business runs without me um i'm able to employ people i'm able to work with staff members like you know and and really put my stamp on the industry because mm-hmm. that's been if you wanted to know like my my mo- my my underlying motivation is i'd like to change or be a ripple that changes the way that industry this industry the mortgage broking industry is perceived mm-hmm. so it's you know, there's no, there's none of this cutthroat behavior. Um, everyone works collaboratively, even though we are competing against one another because there's only a finite number of loans. Mm-hmm. The number of loans is in the trillions, which means there's more than enough business for brokers to share. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason for any of that backhandedness. Mm-hmm. So really changing the whole vibe of the industry would be, is, is always been something that I wanted to do and show that um, someone doesn't have to be completely prof- uh, overly, I don't know if it's the words overly professional is probably the, wo- the right word, mm-hmm. but you can see that everyday person can achieve something quite great. Mm. No, yeah. I completely get the story. That sounds wonderful. So lastly, Session, is there any news on your business you would like to share? Um, any news in regards to my business is we may be looking to expand. Mm-hmm. At the moment, we're in discussions with a potentially taking on another uh, taking on a broker, which is really, 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 really exciting, but also really, really scary. <laughs> um, I think yeah, that's also been a big big uh a big spanner that we we hadn't anticipated but the opportunities come up so it's very Mm -hmm. much wanting to see what that looks like Mm -hmm. um and we are also launching a couple of campaigns so the first campaign that we're running is we're just we're supporting our local two local charities Mm -hmm. Les Pushers which is a charity an Australian-based charity that um is doing some fantastic work in Madagascar Mm -hmm. And Helping Hands Cafe, which is a local Geelong charity that's doing some fantastic work, uh, fantastic work in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So they're one of the campaigns is for any application that settles in that month, 
$50 per application goes to that charity and they go on subsequent months. So January will be one, February will be the other. And it's just something to show that we're building support within our local charity groups. Mm -hmm. uh, the second campaign that we're running is a refer a friend campaign where if you refer a friend through to Resolve Finance Geelong, once the loan settles, you'll both get up to a $150 Visa gift card that you can use anywhere, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely going to be helpful considering how the price of everything is going up a Absolutely. little bit. Yeah, and all it costed was just a name and number. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad um, you know, local business is also investing in non-profit organizations as well because that's one of the ways we give back to our community it's really lovely to correct. hear that correct correct and i know that argument is this but the, the small little it's it's the ripple effect mm -hmm. you know yes. eventually you'll and with enough ripples you create a tidal wave absolutely completely yeah. i couldn't agree with you more yeah so Sash, and thank you so much for being on our business spotlight interview it has been an absolute delight chatting with you and getting to know more about you and your journey Thank you very much for having me.